Hello and welcome back to the course on Deep Natural Language Processing. Today we're looking at the bag of words model. Uh, first thing I'd like us to look at is an email, an email I received just a few days ago. So here we go. Uh, the email is about a catch up and uh, my friend is asking, hello Kirill, checking if you're back in Oz, Oz stands for Australia. Let me know if you're around and keen to sync on how things are going. I defo as in definitely. Uh, could use some of your creative thinking to help with mine. Cheers, V. And so, uh, what I'd like us to pay attention to. First of all, of course, you can see that I sent this email to myself, but um, that's just because I wanted to keep my uh, friend... Um, um, actually, it's because I already replied to the email and then I wanted to resend it. And also, I wanted to keep my friend... Uh, um, keep his privacy. But this is a real email. This is the exact text that I got literally a couple of days ago. And uh, the title is a bit different, but I just called, I changed it to catch up. And so uh, what is interesting about this? We're going to be looking at how um, we can apply natural language processing to this email in the next couple of tutorials. And it will help us work with a real life example. And then the other thing is that you, you, here you can see in google um the gmail app for uh, iphone you can see that it's giving me some suggestions very interesting it's saying uh, it's already giving me some quick replies that i can use it can be yes i'm around i'm back or sorry i'm not very interesting so let's keep that in mind and we will come back to this later in the meantime text of the email is here what can we do with it all right so first things we're going to start off simple we're going to create a model we're going to look at how we can create a model that will give us an a yes no response because that's one of those questions uh, the question is are you back in Australia let me know if you're around and keen to sing so yes no of course it's better to have a long response and that's that's the social norm and it's it's uh, ed the etiquette to like converse with people and just say yes no but even let's try to get a yes no response let's see how we would go about that because that's the first step into nlp and then further on we will see how we can expand that even more all right so we're going to start off with uh, with a vector a vector or a um just like an array a full of zeros let's call it a vector it's easier like that so just zero 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 zeros how many zeros well a lot of zeros 20,000 elements in total 20,000 why is that well it's because of the way that we're building this model 20,000 is the number of words that are commonly used by the average native English language speakers so here's a, a quick search on Google how many words in the English so that's the search I took I, I came up with how many words are there in the English language 171,476 words that's how many entries in the Oxford Dictionary, plus some obsolete words, plus derivative words, yeah, and so on. But also, um, people also you can see Google's giving a suggestion that most adult adult native uh, test takers range from 20 to 30, 20 to 35,000 words. Average native test takers of age eight already you know 10,000 words. Average native test takers of four already you know 5,000 words and adult native test uh, takers learn almost one, whatever. <laughs> so I'm just going into so much detail. Uh, but the interesting thing here is that um, how many, like the, what I wanted to point out, first of all, 20,000, and we will see why exactly we use this number, not more. Um, what I wanted to point out is how many words are there in the English language? Even this in its own is actually, Google is applying natural language processing. It's it's looking at what we wrote and then it's also uh, checking other similar answers. How many words in the English language does the other person, the average person know? So that's not the question I asked, but it came up with that. Then it came up with many other questions. So you can see that the irony is that even in this search on its own, we're already falling victim of natural language processing, uh, even though that wasn't our intention. That's not what we're going to be talking about, but it's just funny that it came up. Anyway, so 20,000 words and a fun fact uh, is that we actually use um, about 3,000 words. Out of those 171,476 words, we only use 3,000 words, not just in um, 
conversational language, but you can see here, uh, a vocabulary of just 3,000 words provides coverage for around 95% of common texts. 95% of uh, common text that I like I'm assuming that's including books and stuff like that so if you do the math it's one, only use 1.75% of the total number of words in the English language so as you can see even that 3,000 like our 20,000 is more than even the 3,000 that covers 95% of the situation so we're pretty good we're definitely covered if we say that our vocabulary, uh, all possible words that we can encounter is going to fit into a vector of 20,000. So every, basically what we're saying, this is important, what we're saying is that every word in the English language has a position somewhere on this vector. So for example, this, the word if could have this position. So if we count one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh position in our custom made vector uh, is the word if and it's always going to be on that position that's very crucial for this for instance the word badminton let's just take like that we can construct this vector any way we want the word badminton could be on this position it's always going to be on this position and the word table is going to be on this position and this is like how this bag of words model works so uh just keep in mind that once you like once we've taken our twenty thousand words uh and then we've assigned them a space that's where they that's what they will this like place and this vector will be associated with it'll be associated with the word if this will be associated with the word badminton this will this position will be associated with the word table um, and the other thing is uh, here you can see I've grayed out the first two and the last one first two are going to be reserved for sauce and EOS sauce stands for start of sentence EOS stands for end of sentence and the last one will be reserved for special words and that's for those words that you're wondering about so I can I can hear your brain churning right now what about those other 150,000 words that we didn't take into account what if they come up well if they come up we're going to just associate them with this uh with this last thing this last element we could just throw them all in there any kind of words that we cannot recognize in the 20,000 we're going to throw them into that last element all right so let's go back to our email text here it is. Hello, Kirill. Checking if you're back in Oz. Let me know if you are around, etc., etc., etc. Cheers, V. Um, and so let's see how this can be put into our bag of words. If uh, you've probably noticed by now that this is our bag of words that we're constructing here. So now we're going to now throw the text into this bag of words. How's that going to happen? I'm just going to throw it in, and then I'll just I'll explain how it happens. So there it is. That's the result. It that's it depends. It all of course depends on how we construct our vector, but this is our result in, in the way we construct our vector. And let's let's look at this um, way. So uh, we've, as we discussed previously, we took the twenty thousand words and we associated each position with uh, a word. And now we go through our um, text and find and then like increase the counter in each position of the associated word. So hello, let's say uh, in our vector it is in position number five because we only have one hello in this whole email we're going to put a one here kirill is definitely not an english language word so we're going to have to put it into there and the reason why there's three here is because we have kirill then oz and v those are not english language words not among our twenty thousand. they're all going to go here then we've got the comma Surprise, the comma also has a position. Let's say it was in position number so three, six, seven, eight, nine. So the ninth position is associated with a comma because we have one comma in our email. Oh, actually we have two commas. Okay, so this should be a two, but let's let's not think about that comma. Let's let's forget about that comma. Uh, I didn't notice it. So assuming we have one comma in our email, this is a one. Checking, let's say that this, uh, this, um, Element is associated with the word checking. This is a one because there's only one word checking. If it's a two because we have two ifs in our email. So it's going to be a two. You is a two because we have two us in our email, including uh, the rest of the text. I don't think there's any more us in there. And so on. So that's basically how we fill this bag of words. We just put in the, the quantity of words for every position. It's pretty straightforward. We're just... Uh, filling in this vector as you can see it's going to be quite a sparse vector there's going to be lots of zeros 
uh, almost 20,000 zeros and some of the words are going to be filled in. Um, okay, and so what is our goal? So our goal, as we discussed before, is to come up with a reply yes or no to this email, which is now in the form of a vector. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do it through training data. So we're going to look at all of the emails that I have replied to because this is us training a model to reply to my emails or in your case, in anybody's case, is going to be training a model to reply to their emails. We're going to look at training data. We're going to need some training data and we're going to fish it out of the inbox or outbox. Um, so let's say, we, let's look at a couple. So here we've got, hey mate, have you read about Hinton's capsule networks? And Gerald replied to that, no. Uh, so we're going to use that as a training example. The next one, did you like that recipe I sent you last week? The answer was yes. Uh, it was a good recipe, I guess. So here we go. So now we have two, three. Hi, Kirill. Are you coming to dinner tonight? Yes. Dear Kirill, would you like to service your car with us again? No. Are you coming to Australia in December? Yes. And so on. So ideally, we would have tens or hundreds of thousands of emails like that and responses like that. Yes, no responses. Um, and of course, it would be like a lot of groundwork to get that data because we usually don't just respond yes no to emails so we'd have to look at this answer and understand what was the sentiment the sentiment was no or what was the overall was it a yes or no no yes or no and so on um, of course this is kind of more of a theoretical example nobody's going to do this for their own inbox but nevertheless the point stands so how would we train how would we use this training data we would use a similar principle and convert each one of those emails to a vector um, and this, and again, each vector would be 20,000 elements long. So, um, you know, I just threw some numbers in here to, to get the point across. It's not exactly accurate, but so we have these vectors, like lots and lots and lots, lots of vectors, lots and lots and lots of responses, yes and no. And yeah, so now what we're going to do is we're going to, um, apply a model. Once we have all this data, we're going to apply models. So one of the models we can apply to create our bag of words, um, or one of the algorithms we can apply to create our bag of words model is the logistic regression. So we apply the logistic regression to our yes, no responses to these, to this information that we have. Um, and then um, once we have that model, once we've separated, so we know we kind of like we've modeled what goes, like what goes into a yes, like what, what is likely to yield a yes, what is likely to yield a no, and the um, border between them. Then we can feed our actual um, email that we got into this model and then get a response, so for instance, yes, and that's it. So we use all the training data to create a model. We feed in our um, actual email, which uh, this is important which has exactly the same format. So you can see that every input here, every um, every time we were training the data, the independent variable, um, the, the independent variable vector always had the same length, 20,000. It always had the same format. So we know that this position always corresponds to a certain word. This position is always a certain word. This position, let's say one, two, three, which, which word was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, eight, nine. So this was what? what no, this one is the if, right? So this corresponds to if or something like that. So we know that it's it's the same format. It's always the same length, twenty thousand. So we can safely feed in this vector into there. It's got the same number of features. Bam, we get an answer. So for instance, we get yes. So and then we can like look back. Oh, what did the actual email say? It said hello, Carol checking. Oh, okay. So based on my training, I would have uh, most likely replied to this with a yes. Interesting. The other approach that we can take here, or first of all, let's put this on our diagram. There's our diagram, and that's a natural language processing algorithm, which is called bag of words. It sits over there. Um, the other approach that we could apply here or take here is we could, instead of a logistic regression, we could use a uh, neural network. We could, because we have a vector, right? So we have all these vectors. We could feed them into as an input layer, like over 20,000 neurons into our uh, neural network. They would go through one hidden layer, two hidden layers, as many hidden layers as we want, uh, our own decision on how to structure it, and then bam, 
we've got an output layer and tells us yes or no. And so we, again, we use all this data that we have here, all our millions and millions and millions of emails and responses, we'd use that to train our neural networks all, all through back propagation and uh, stochastic gradient descent, all the weights would be updated and bam, we have an answer. So not bam, we have an answer. So we would use these answers here to train the network, we'd use the pairs, like the vector and the answer, vector and answer. So to minimize the error, stochastic gradient descent, back propagation, updated weights, bam, we have a neural network, it's all trained up. Now we feed in our vector here, which represents our new email, into the neural network and voila we get our answer and uh, in this case uh, might also be yes they might yield different results but if the models are constructed well more or less they should be coming up with similar uh, or the same answers most of the time and so in this case we've got a deep natural language processing or i didn't put the emphasis right there we've got a deep natural language processing algorithm right because we're using a neural network and that uh, is the difference. So in both cases, the bag of words model, in one case it's an NLP bag of words, in other cases a deep NLP bag of words. Uh, but in both cases, it is still a bag of words and it has its own limitations and it has its own, um, yeah, limitations and issues that are not that great. And so I'll point out one of them right now is that the response is very simple. It's just a yes or a no right like we we want something more sophisticated we want like a conversation you can't really have a conversation you can't really build a chatbot if you're just going to be saying yes no all the time so that's one of the limitations we'll talk about some more of them um in the upcoming tutorial and we'll also see how to overcome those limitations and what models await us uh, in the future and uh, i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i really enjoyed going through all of this with you together and i can't wait to see you next time until then Enjoy natural language processing.